This video is made possible by Squarespace. Check out the link down below to learn more. This right here is the Minisform UM700, and there are a couple different things that make this mini PC special. One, this actually ships with Linux. This ships with Manjaro KDE, and two, this is actually the test bench that Valve is recommending game developers use to go ahead and make sure that their games will run efficiently on the highly anticipated Steam Deck. So this video is going to be my review of this little mini PC. We're gonna be doing a couple different things, including checking out the operating system, some general benchmarking, and including some game tests. And speaking of tests, uh, you might as well use the link below to go ahead and test out the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. What you're watching right now is actually a time lapse of me trying it out for the very first time. And for somebody who has no experience with it, it was very easy to be able to really understand and use the platform. One of my favorite things about it was periodically switching between the mobile and desktop views to get a better understanding of what your website's gonna look like in more locations. Squarespace has a lot of the stuff that you're gonna want, such as search engine optimization tools, analytics, e-commerce, and a whole bunch more. And better yet, if you go ahead and use the link in the description, you can get 10% off of your order. So head over to squarespace.com forward slash tech hut. So this right here is the box that this little mini PC actually came in. If we go ahead and flip it over to the back, we can see some of the system specifications. This model features a AMD Ryzen 7 3750H with four cores and a base clock of 2.3 gigahertz and a max clock up to four gigahertz. Now, this isn't actually the very first time I've checked out one of these Minisform PCs. I have a separate review on the uh, the UM350 model, which features a Ryzen 5 of the same generation. So because of that later, what we're gonna be able to do is a little uh, price to performance comparison. Opening up this box, we have a manual, and of course we have the computer itself. The items that ship with this computer are fairly standard. We have a small adapter to go ahead and expand our storage. If you take a look here, you can see it's a 70 millimeter SATA connector. And right here, this end just plugs directly into our motherboard. And this will allow you to put any 2.5 inch SSD or hard disk into your little computer. In addition, we have our power cable and AC adapter, an HDMI cord, a display port cord, and a monitor mount. So this right here is the little mini computer. And I already mentioned this in my review of the UM350. The best thing, in my opinion, about this is how easily accessible some of the hardware is on this device. If you go ahead and just push down on these two corners, you'll hear the little spring. And then when you do that, it will release the top here. And then you can just go ahead and pull that off and have full access to the easily changeable components in your little system here. Now, this system specifically features a configuration of 16 gigabytes of Kingston RAM and a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD, and it actually has a cool little heat sink there. And this is kind of hard to see, but right there is the little uh, slot or the little connector for your expandable storage. And speaking of this lid here is where you can go ahead and mount your 2.5 inch SSD or hard disk. Now, as far as graphics on this device, we have the integrated Radeon RX Vega 10 GPU. Now it's here that I'm gonna note that this isn't a one-to-one -one spec to spec with the Steam Deck. When comparing the specs on this thing to the Steam Deck, the CPU of the Minisform is slightly better, while the GPU or the integrated graphics is just slightly worse. But according to the official developer documentation on Valve, and I quote, the team looked around and found that this mini PC on Amazon this one, which has roughly similar specifications to the Steam Deck is the best thing that you could go ahead and use for actually testing out games. Now, as far as general connectivity, this has just about everything you're going to want. It features a type C port that can also support 4K out at 60 Hertz. Here on the front, we have a USB 3 Gen 1 and Gen 2 port headphone jack, and of course our power button. And then flipping it around to the back, there are two more USB 3 Gen 2s, HDMI DisplayPort 2.5 gigabit LAN, and our power connector. All right, so here we are on the mini PC. I'm actually screen recording directly from it. This is OBS Studio, and it's running pretty good. Here, let's go ahead and open up our terminal real quick. Right now, with OBS screen recording, looks like everything is hovering 10 to 20 percent which really is not too bad now i'm not going to dive too far into the desktop i'm just going to mention some of the things that are different than your traditional manjaro kde plasma install 
First thing you're gonna notice, there is a branded wallpaper, so that's pretty cool. Down here on the application launcher icon, you can see there's a little extra flare there. Uh, a big thing is they went with Vivaldi, so the uh, Menace form people removed, or is it completely removed? Firefox is still here, but they did include Vivaldi pre-installed and down here as your default web browser. Growing, going through most of these, everything is pretty standard. The one difference is that it includes crossover, and I'm pretty sure it's the first thousand units that will come with a premium license of crossover, which the Linux experiment has a separate video on this that I would recommend. He explains this very well. It also downloads and installs all the dependencies, the scripts, the tweaks, the, the registry entries that you need to make sure that the application, if it can run, will run. So you don't have to configure anything yourself manually, it just works in one click, like it's a one click install. So just know if you do purchase one of these, you might get a free license for that. So that's pretty cool. We have the LibreOffice suite of applications. We have a uh, app image launcher settings and utilities, basic KDE applications. Just a real quick check here, right here, the uh, Minus form is like a custom global theme. And of course nothing that, well, none of this really matters because chances are, you're probably gonna configure this your own ways anyways. And then here, they do have their own little uh, custom splash screen too, so that's pretty cool. Now, the real question we have here is, will it game? For actual gaming, I'm gonna be using this perfect little 720p monitor. It's actually 1280 by 800, which is perfect. But first, it's here that I'm gonna have to note that initially when trying to load up Steam or play any games, I was having a uh, very strange error, which had something to do with the Vulcan drivers. But to fix this, all I went ahead and did was removed the steam-manjaro package and installed the steam native package. And for the most part, I did not have very much issues going forward. So the first game I went ahead and loaded up, and this is kind of a default when it comes to testing systems, is CSGO. On medium settings, this game performed remarkably well with an average FPS range of 80 to 100, even in intense situations. Then I switched over to a moderately low requirement game, Don't Starve Together, and this was a similar situation. No lag at all, and it stayed strong at 60 FPS. Watch for this game was the max setting. Now, I did want to go ahead and try out Splitgate. Personally, that's my favorite game, but I was having some issues with the Unreal Engine crashing, and I couldn't really figure this out no matter where I looked. It seems that a lot of people are actually having the same issue. So I don't know. So from here, I moved on to some Windows games running with Proton. Now the first game and really the only one that was requested directly was Warhammer. Now this one did run, but at first it was really rough. So I needed to drop all of the settings as low as possible to see if that would help. And it did a little bit. Now actually playing through this, I kind of got that rubber banding effect that we saw on the Linus Tech Tips video about the Steam Deck when he was playing Forza. Where the animation stays smooth, true to the frame rate report, but the experience of playing the game is uneven and jarring. Walking around and exploring in this game was generally playable, but as soon as you got into any action or fighting, there would be some huge frame drops that basically unfortunately made this game unplayable. But ending off games on a good note, I tried out another Windows game called Call of Jarez. And at medium settings, this game was a phenomenal experience. Frame rate sat between 50 and 80, and I was immersed enough that I forgot that I was actually recording, and the battery of my camera died. So yes, this is a cool little gaming machine, but chances are, if you're gonna buy one of these, you're not only gonna buy this for gaming. These can make great little home computers. Uh, I personally run a couple of these as little dedicated servers in my cabinet back there. But something that is really important to me when it comes just to using computers is render times. So I went ahead and opened up Caden Live and rendered out a 10 minute 1080p screen recording and the process finished in just a little over 10 minutes. So it rendered out at about the same playback speed as the actual video itself. For strenuous tasks, it's not like the powerhouse machine you want, but it could handle it just fine. And just general system snappiness and overall user experience, I, I didn't have any real issues. And here, if we go ahead and take a look at my Geekbench account, I just ran this on both of these little mini PCs, both running Manjaro KDE. And at no surprise, the multi-core score performance of the UM350 is slightly lower by about, by about 270 points versus the UM700. 
The single core score, very close, but the older 2500U CPU scored slightly higher. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and link to these scores down in the description so you can go ahead and see some of these specifics for yourself. This for sure is a great little machine and it does have my recommendation. And if you're interested in purchasing it, you could go ahead and check out the link down below. With that, big thank you to our YouTube members and Patreon supporters and a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. You can check them out with the link down below. Uh, with all that, have a beautiful day and goodbye. That would help and it did a little bit.